Hi, it's Steve and Joe from Fresh Agenda. And Steve, this week we thought we'd have a little chat about uh, the the deal that almost happened, but has mm. um, had the kibosh put on it. Yeah. So uh, there's a bit of an ownership tree of some businesses, relevant businesses in Australia. Um, Mong Yu with a direct ownership of Bellamy's, mm -hmm. which went through last year. Uh, and they've also had an acquisition over time uh, through into Borough Foods through a uh, minority-owned uh, but it's controlled subsidiary, subsidiary food yeah. yarn yeah. Um, <coughs> into Borough Foods. Um, Kieran owning Lion. So the proposed deal, uh, which was announced, I think, early this year. Uh, late last year, late I last think. Year. Um, maybe in last quarter last year. Mm -hmm. Um, Kieran um, proposing to sell the Lion assets, which now are just the basically the fresh milk and a, and a flavoured milk brand mm. and as associated assets. Saputo's bought the the cheese business out of Lion um, prior to that. Um, so the the sale was announced. It got uh, approval from the competition regulator in Australia, the Australian Competition Consumer Commission, uh, back in February. Um, but it's being reported that even though the Foreign Investment Review Board uh, also recommended the deal, uh, bearing in mind that it's the sale of, of one foreign-owned company to mm. another foreign-owned company, mm. um, it's been reported that the, our Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, um, has basically ignored that advice and decided to block the sale. Which you have to say is a, a political decision. Yeah. Um, and, and given... <laughs> it's our gate going off there. Um, you would have to say it's a political decision um, in the absence of any other information. But mm. basically the two parties, um, Mong, Mong Nui and uh, Kieran, have decided to just put the, the deal cool on the deal ice. Yeah. yeah, so they haven't waited to get um, their application refused. They've just yeah, pulled out. Scrubbed it. Mm. So leaves the question of... Um, Lion in the Australian market, which is pure a pure fresh milk play. So what happens there? And they have got a very good iced coffee in a market where the other milk player isn't allowed to buy you. Mm. Um, no obvious other purchaser, mm. uh, given the lack of synergy in that in that sector. So, and as in most developed countries, um, white milk in Australia, highly competitive, low margin volume business, um, a lot of uh, private label. Mm. retailer brand um, product that goes through that that per, channel so it's tough yeah um, in per capita decline it's not yeah. it's not losing ground like you see in the US and Europe in terms yeah of but it's sales. not a growth sector is it no. apart from that awesome iced coffee yeah which you've mentioned twice <laughs> I feel like some iced coffee so, now some background um, those who have been following the politics on this because uh, there is quite a bit um, the relationship between the Australian government and the Chinese government hasn't been great since they came into power they the Australian government came into power. Um, and um, in terms of food, we've, we've seen, you know, there are other things going on in the background mm. around human rights, around um, territorial disputes, um, various other things. Um, but we've seen uh, a long running barley case, a couple of years this has been running. Yep. The China has uh, moved to a, uh, an investigation of an anti dumping claim about Australia's barley exports. We've had a number of abattoirs banned. Uh, and just the last week, I think, um, China calling on an anti-dumping inquiry about Australian wine, which is a premium yeah. brand in premium brands in that market. So that's interesting. Yeah, and that's all happened this year. Um, mm. Following our government, um, for whatever reason, sticking its neck above the parapet and calling for a, an inquiry on the the origins of the COVID nineteen mm. um, pandemic, um, which. The, the global community later also called for and China agreed, but um, China didn't look kindly on us sticking our heads up. So we certainly hear um, around the traps that China's often tricky to deal with um, in terms of, of trade and getting product in there, but it's gotten a lot harder in the last um, for few Australia, months for, for Australia. Australia. Food yeah. exporters generally. That's right. Yeah. And we've heard stories that some of that's coming at consumer level, that some, some consumers think well if Australia doesn't like us we don't like Australian products so mm. uh, not a great uh, environment for dairy which is highly exposed to China as are our food and um, forestry exports.
yeah. uh, in general. And some recent history between 2015 and 2019 in Australia took its um, dairy exports to China from $330 million US um, to over 1.1 billion, mm. um, you know, more than three times. Um, and the stellar growth in infant formula, it's now uh, nearly half of the trade to China. Yeah. Um, we, we have a greater tonnage of infant formula exports to China than New Zealand, which is surprising some people. Mm. Um, given the, the, you know, the publicity given to the Sinlay A2 yeah, expansion. Yeah, and all those and, deals that have been done in New Zealand. Yeah, mm. so Australia has built quite a... And it's a broad trade because mm. we've got a lot of players in there. There's a lot of niche operations. So um, fair to say this industry is extremely nervous about what, what happens next and whether dairy uh, there is some direct action taken about dairy imports. Absolutely. And and there was an interesting little story that, that emerged this week of, of one infant formula uh, manufacturer, Bubs, who's mm. now done a deal with Bing Mate in, um, in China to do the canning and packaging in China to try and... Uh, in their words, circumvent some of the backlash and, and mitigate the risk in that market. So certainly, you know, people in Australia or dairy um, exporters in Australia are going to have to think about uh, how they manage that those relationships and mitigate mm. that risk really carefully in the, the next few months because by all reports, um, the Chinese authorities aren't taking calls from our politicians. Yeah. So not a good situation. Yeah. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> other developments this week. I mean, we have we have uh, a full set of trade data which we can add up. This is less exciting. Um, uh, a huge month of June, but put it into perspective, we had we had some fairly slow trade earlier. Mm -hmm. But um, this is like the um, the clearance sale you've always wanted, yeah. as we saw low prices rip into um, April and May um, as the you know European and US markets reacted to um, the, the closures. Um, buyers were hovering and and have scooped up product um, quite spectacularly. So the um, charts there show just the year on year. I mean, it, it's strong against last year, but we had we've had a couple of years where that month dips typically mm. um, up fifteen percent for the month year on year. But put into context, the first half is still flat in volume terms. We're sure, st we're still you know having a quieter year <laughs> given we've had a fair pandemic. Of <laughs> the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and the chart at the bottom just showing where where trade's gone, mm. uh, and that's interesting when you you know when you look at, uh, across the commodities. Um, the um, big changes in the month across the board almost. Yeah. Um, ironically, with uh, with cheaper prices of whole milk powder, uh, we've seen the fat filled uh, trade fall further. Mm. Um, so that's gone into a slowdown because whole milk powder is better value. Um, <clears throat> yeah, almost all across the board, but you've got to take the three month into into uh, context there because it's um, yeah, but still healthy growth. Um, it is quite amazing how responsive, even with yeah. all the uncertainty, economic uncertainty out there, um, when some of these market buyers and some of these markets see a bargain, they, they will pounce, won't mm. they? Yeah, and, and you could see North Africa has mm. it, most, most of the trade is still well down. I mean, you're yeah. still below trend. Um, uh, and I guess skim milk powder in Southeast Asia is coming back up towards that trend after buying a lot at a cheaper price the year before. Sure. Uh, we're back up to the trend line that we draw there. and But when you look elsewhere, it's still, you know, we've still got a bit of capacity, you would think. Uh, yeah, so could it keep going? Yeah. Mm. That all depends on the pandemic. The pandemic. Uh, which yeah. which is certainly going to slow down some economies. Mm. Um so, chart of the week, Joe. Chart of the week. What have you uh, chosen. I thought we'd um, we'd head across to the states where there's a lot of activity, um, more generally. But on the the stocks front, back in uh, July. End of July. Yeah. End of July. Um, interesting data there on butter stocks, which have have grown in July, which is unusual for that time of year. Usually, you've got a lot of cream being used in mm. ice cream, butter being used in. Uh, food service but of course this year things look quite different so um, we had that drawdown in stocks um, between March and June when there was some maybe restocking activity yeah well retail sales have been very good yeah, yeah. and some good retail sales but uh, commercial disappearance just um, obviously slowing a, a mm. little bit in that latest month and then cheese stocks we've got there too uh, which that's American cheese. Yeah, so American cheese. Mostly benefiting from retail because it's pretty much uh, cheddar. Yeah. Uh, but 
part of the cheddar market is weak with barrels going into processed cheese that being affected by yeah. by this but <clears throat> yeah but cheese stocks are are down i mean they're still above last year but last year was tight we didn't have milk growth happening last year that's exactly right so mm. yeah I, again that retail story is still pretty strong mm. through those those months it appears and that's benefiting those stocks or reducing those stocks but the u.s has a fat problem it has a fat problem yeah with more milk coming and uh probably you know cheese demand is is good but it won't use up all that fat that's coming yeah so where does it go mm. okay um well that's probably enough for us um Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Uh, and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from her. Mm -hmm. <laughs>